Hello everyone. Welcome to the Digitech Dialog. I am Arpit Gupta. The Digitech Dialog series is an initiative of ET Government, The Economic Times. Today, my guest is Padma Shri Professor Manindra Agrawal. He is the professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering and former deputy director at Indian Institute of Technology Kanpur. Welcome Professor Agrawal. Thank you. Professor Agrawal hails from Allahabad in Uttar Pradesh. He did Welcome, BTech Professor Agrawal. and PhD in Computer Science and Engineering from Indian Institute of Technology Kanpur and later joined as an assistant professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at IIT Kanpur. Professor Agrawal designed private key encryption algorithms for the Indian Navy and Air Force. These algorithms are being used by the armed forces to secure their communications. In 2013, he was honored with the fourth highest civilian award of India, Padma Shri. Professor Agrawal works in complexity theory and computational number theory and has interest in cryptography. Let's begin the conversation, Professor Agrawal. My first question to you is, what are the key takeaways from the study on the UP model of handling COVID-19 prepared by a team of experts from IIT Kanpur, which was led by you? Over to you. Thank you. Uh, the key takeaway uh, are a few. Uh, the central theme of this uh, handling of the second wave of COVID-19 in this UP state was that uh, the decision that the economy will not be closed. So there will not be any lockdown imposed. Now, what on one hand, this permits uh, the economy to not uh, go you know, bad and allows it to continue. On the other hand, one has to be extra careful because uh, the probability of the pandemic spreading fast increases because now people are going out of their houses, they are meeting others. So it's a, a much higher chance that they will be transferring the infection from one person to other. What was required along with opening the economy was a very extensive attempt to control the spread of the pandemic so that it doesn't control spread uncontrollably. It will spread. There is You cannot avoid it from spreading, especially the Delta variant was such that uh, you know, it would just uh, bypass any control measures. But the key thing was to ensure that uncontrolled spread does not take place. And uh, by looking at the data and the analysis we have done, we found that except for a small period of during April, May, about two weeks long, the rest of the period of the second wave was uh, managed very well. Everything was within control, whether it is availability of hospital beds, oxygen, or various kind of medication, as well as uh, you know, uh, ensuring that uh, the livelihoods are maintained. So these are the key findings and the uh, the advantage of keeping the economy open was also very evident in that the unemployment rate in the state dropped from 11% in March 2020 to 4% in June 2021. Professor Agrawal, you use the new mathematical model for uh, pandemics uh, called Sutra for the projection of uh, coronavirus uh, trajectory during the first and second wave of COVID-19. What are the possibilities you see of COVID-19 third wave in India? Well, the possibility can never be ruled out However, the, as the time progresses, the possibility keeps kept getting smaller and smaller. And also, even if the pandemic third wave comes, it will not cause as much uh, devastation as the second wave did. In our simulations, we find that the intensity of third wave, if it comes, will be similar to the intensity of the first wave. And that can be managed uh, rather easily now that we have appropriate health infrastructure. Professor Agarwal, you have made significant contributions to the theory of efficient reactions between computational problems. How do you see leveraging mathematics and computer science together to help governments solve their problems in the future? Something that uh, uh, the theoreticians like us have to make a bit of an extra effort translate that knowledge, maybe it will also require modifying for 
be of practical use. For myself, uh, I've been uh, using my understanding in cryptography and other mathematical aspects to you know, secure communications, as you had mentioned. Also, in, since last year, I have uh, been involved with the mathematical modeling of the pandemic through which its uh, spread was uh, predicted. Uh, it did uh, succeed a lot of times. Of course, there are times when it failed as well. So these are always things to learn and improve upon. And I think uh, as the time goes, uh, not just a few person, many of us uh, will need to step forward and ensure that the knowledge that we have gained is uh, put to good use. So state governments across India have been implementing administrative reforms, national e-governance plan and digital India initiatives for more than a decade now. How do you see COVID-19 pandemic help us tracking the digital transformation in the governments? Well, COVID-19 certainly has that had one positive uh, fallout, which is increase the digitization of the economy and services as well. Uh, you see a lot of services are now available in, in a digital mode. Uh, the economy, I mean, the movement of money, thanks to the UPI interface, has uh, really exploded and uh, it's increasing day by day. And uh, I see this uh, continuing in the future because of the ease and or the convenience that it provides. At the same time, there is the, the aspect of cyber security, because when you move in the digital world, then uh, there is a possibility that uh, some attacks can take place and uh, some uh, important information can get stolen. So that part needs to be also handled parallelly. And I am seeing that the state government are increasing more and more digitization. Many of the groups in various IITs are working with the state government to help in that. For example, uh, some of us are working with the government of Karnataka, government of UP. We are also discussing with the government of Uttarakhand about the digitization of the land records and putting them on a blockchain so that the probability of tampering reduces significantly. And uh, we just recently talked to the uh, Indian Port Authority and uh, so that their entire movement of goods and control, which they have digitized, but uh, to make it more secure, uh, make it more efficient, uh, make it more simple for everyone. So these are the things that uh, are easily doable. Uh, many groups are working on it. Many governments are interested in it. So I hope that uh, in a few years time, this uh, uh, there will be very significant uh, impact and results that we can see. But as you have been to many places uh, abroad, like in Germany, you have been in Chennai and other places in India. So what challenges uh, do you see in the adoption of technology in the current times? Challenges are uh, really convincing people, which is getting more easier and easier with time. Uh, earlier, there was a lot of resistance in adoption of technology, but as people are seeing the benefit of the technology, they are uh, uh, becoming uh, more accepting about it. Uh, the other challenge uh, is uh, uh, that I already mentioned about the security, because as the digitization increases, uh, the possible while it brings ease of use, it also opens up uh, the possibility of cyber attacks, which can happen from anywhere across the world. And the one has to guard and protect against that. Also, there is an aspect of technology which is uh, getting uh, more and more concerning, which is uh, a lot of people are to get totally immersed in it. They, you know, social media or movies or, you know, many other things, or games, and they lose touch with the reality to quite an extent. And that is not a very healthy situation to be in. So there needs to be a balance in the life of people using technology as well as uh, you know being interacting with the real world so the technology should not overwhelm 
and that is something uh, that a lot of work still needs to be done certainly but uh, we cannot uh, depend on the technology of yesterday for the problem of today because technology is very uh, rapidly changing sir what is your opinion on unleashing the potential of emerging technologies like ai ml cloud analytics ar vr iot to enhance overall efficiency of administration so oh, that's absolutely possible like uh, once uh, the data gets digitized it becomes a lot easier for uh, to analyze that and extract useful information from it and based on that useful information uh, you know make good decisions for example you know we some of a group in it kanpur had worked with the up police uh, analyzing the calls in on the up 100 number and uh, based on that analysis that they get a very large number of calls and based on their analysis they came up with very interesting inferences as to which are the regions which are there are suddenly a spurt of calls from a region which denotes which can be correlated with certain events in that region so these are the things that uh, can give very useful insights into the, uh, how the society is working where the administration should put their resources how to tackle it so and we are really at the beginning of this curve right now with time we'll see more and more use of this technologies let me ask some questions about your educational background and your professional life sir you studied uh, in iit kanpur you did your uh, btech then you did phd then later you joined there as assistant professor in the department of computer science and engineering so what are some of the path breaking innovations that you came across during this journey well it's been a very interesting and satisfying journey uh, uh, a job of an academician uh, on one hand involves uh, interacting and educating students which is always a pleasure to train the next generation it also gives you freedom to explore different ideas uh, chart your own research path and i have been fortunate to have the company of some outstanding students who have worked with me who have inspired me uh, pushed me to do my best and uh, this whole uh, since last uh, uh, year or so the pandemic time has also been very educating uh, educative in the sense that uh, this is covid or modeling is not a domain which i was working in earlier but covid through a series of circumstances forced me to get into this and uh, i had the opportunity to work with some really outstanding people and uh, contribute whatever little i have done it's great to know that your journey has been satisfying and when i see the list of your achievements and honors uh, i uh, i'm sure that uh, it must have been a very satisfying journey sir uh if i have to broadly tell your achievements so you have received uh, padma shri then you got the uh, shanti swarup bhatnagar award you got the infosys mathematics prize gd billa award for scientific research there are so many but should so- not take it seriously uh, you know because the way how i should tell you how the way awards work it's important to get first two three awards and then whenever an award committee meets they think that oh this guy has already got a few awards he must be good so give him another award so that way you can collect a lot of them so i don't take that very seriously i would like to know which which one has been your close to heart we would like to know the story a oh, close to heart is uh, a very big surprise frankly at the very early award of clay research uh, is from clay research institute called clay research award so this is an institution based in boston and uh, in the year 2002 i got a call from the head of the institute saying that they would like to invite me for uh, giving a lecture to a meeting they are organizing and they said they will pay for my travel etc and i have we had uh, just uh, come up with this uh, algorithm to check if a number is prime or not and he wanted me to uh, know detail on that so i accepted that and i went to boston and uh, uh, the 
the director of the institute met me and uh, we were going walking towards the uh, auditorium where my lecture was to be held and then suddenly he turns to me and says by the way you are getting clay research award now so there was a big shock to me because i was never, never expected that as an award that uh, has been given to some of the greatest uh, mathematicians of the world and to find suddenly myself to be one of such recipient was a huge surprise especially because it was it told to me at the last moment sir iits are uh, known as lighthouse of the uh, educational institutions when it comes to innovation and technology a lot of startups innovations are happening across uh, iits every day any specific suggestions to the budding entrepreneurs from your side it's important i think to look at the right use of technology it's very easy to uh, get impressed with a technology and lose sight of whether it will make a big impact in the lives of people and that's it's very important because uh, otherwise one tends to get lost in just technology and loses sight of that translation of technology which can make a real difference in the lives of people so these two together is something that should always be kept in the forefront and uh, those who are able to do it are very successful now that we are heading towards the end of the conversation professor agrawal my last question to you is as per the iit kanpur report despite facing numerous challenges in terms of huge population lack of resources and reverse migration of workers uttar pradesh government's covid pandemic response strategy is serving as a model for various states and even countries now that we are also expecting a third possible wave of covid 19 any message or any suggestion that you would like to give to the state governments over to you well uh i mean everybody not just the government everybody needs to be a little careful uh while possibility of third wave is less but we cannot rule it out and therefore we have to be all uh mentally ready to handle it if it comes uh, we don't expect it to be anywhere close to the second wave however it's very important for everyone to get vaccinated in those who especially those who haven't had a vaccination they must now that vaccines are available uh, quite easily they should everybody should get vaccinated uh, just yesterday the government has also approved a vaccine for uh, you know children from 2 to 18 years of age so the especially the children who have low immune immune system uh, the sort of not such strong immune system for them this vaccine will be extremely useful so i think that's uh, our best defense against uh, a possible future wave to ensure to that we all get vaccinated we all fo- follow basic care uh, for you know whenever there is there is a very crowded place use mask as much as possible and uh, i think we should be fine sir any of your priorities that you are currently working on you would like to share uh currently i'm just working more on the analysis side of the covid uh, second wave this is one part of it which was done for the up i'm also looking at exactly how the delta variant came about it spread in the country and those details are being still worked out and when it is ready i'll be uh, making it uh, public Thank you professor Manindra Agarwal it was really a great interaction with you our sincere thanks to you for accepting our invitation and making today's show wonderful we wish you all the best for your future endeavors thank you it was a pleasure talking to you